All right, so we, we took a deep dive kind of into my philosophy of um, small design and diagnosis with small design in the previous video, which you should look at even if you don't have from Excess small design because it goes into a lot of um, details on what exactly I am thinking about when I go about doing a digital small design. As it relates to facial analyses, um, tooth size, arch size um, issues, and, and all the aesthetic parameters that go through my mind. Um, this tutorial, what we're going to do is dive into PlanCAD Premium and take a more superficial view of small design, um, as you would if you were just doing a digital mock-up for a patient. Um, so once again, I would definitely consider watching the first um, part of the tutorial. Okay, so let's open up our PlanCAD Premium Plan Manager, which is basically, like I said, PlanMecca's version of ExoCAD. Um, and we're going to set this case up. Let's do five through. Let's do five through twelve. Um, pick a client. Let's just call this uh, Digital Smile Design. Okay, and. Go ahead and double click your five here. I'm just going to go ahead and call this anatomic phonic. <clears throat> um, so we'll probably 3D print this. One way that you could get the 3D printing as an option here, let me just pick acrylic PMMA. Um, and then if you look here, no, no, and no, because we're not going to design gingiva or anything like that. If you want to, if you're running a Planmeca system and you have it defaulted to the Planmill 50S under material configuration, you'll lose the 3D print option. Um, so all you need to do is go to default for your materials. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to click and you can see 3D print comes up because we're, not that it really matters. I mean, you could, um, basically 3D printing removes some of the burr restriction diameters and over milling compensation and things like that. So not that we're actually going to fabricate these prosthetics. We're just basically going to combine them into a wax up and then um, 3D print it and make a putty wash. We'll do a shell provisional tutorial at a later date. So now we have this uh, tooth number five. Once again, we call it anatomic phonic 3D print. Um, no, 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 and no. And we want to copy it over to the other teeth. There's a few ways that you could do that. You can just click the tooth and drag it like this. And I like doing that because it's just, I don't have to touch the keyboard. Or you could hold shift and click. If you mess up, you could drag like a, a regular tooth um, and erase stuff. And then you could drag back. It's kind of cool. You could even drag cross arch if I wanted to, but then I could go back and erase. Okay. So there's a lot of powerful things um, with the setup tab that eliminates a lot of the monotony of PlanCAD Easy. So it's saying it's going to design these with connectors. That's the green dots. We don't need connectors. We're not designing an actual bridge. Uh, we don't need the extra mass and, um, and the extra step of creating connectors in the software. So just go ahead and eliminate those from the wizard by basically unchecking those boxes. They will turn from green to a dark slate gray. Now for the opposing, just click any tooth and pick antagonist. You don't have to like actually like pick the exact teeth that the individual has. All this really does is prompt the software to ask you to load a, an antagonist. If you don't put anything down there, you won't get the option to load an antagonist. Not the end of the world. You could go into expert mode and click um, on add mesh and then load an antagonist. So scan mode, we did digital impressions. Um, go ahead and save this and then go to PlanCAD Premium. Now download the case from the Mod Institute website so that you could play along with me and the photos and everything like that. This is an older case, uh, maybe five years ago. Um, so the photos, I wasn't really good at taking photos then. And I think that's important for me to convey to you about the photography and we'll go into why I think this is a bad photo uh, uh, group. So um, find the files that you, mine are under downloads. Let's see here, downloads, yeah. And 
did we have? It's asking for the upper, so we're going to load the upper SD, and it's asking for the lower, we're going to load the lower SD, and here is the model. Okay. So we have, you know, um, spacing, we have some compensatory eruption that's occurred, we have a bolt discrepancy, we have uh, wear facets um, here and here that are very aggressive for such a young lady. So we have a lot of different issues going on with this patient. So we have a lot that we could potentially talk about with this restorative plan, um, things such as vertical dimension, anterior guidance, posterior disclusion, mutually protective occlusion. Uh, we could talk about virtual articulation, but this tutorial is just really designed for a quick dive into digital smile design, um, 3D sculpting. So let's just do that as to not um, get you guys bogged down with all the details that could frustrate you. Um, so the first step, and we're, you know, it wants you to select the orientation of the model because when you bring in a model, it just wants to ensure that it, the the vertices are in the correct orientation, that the normals aren't flipped. Um, what that means basically is, if you could think of a, a T-shirt, there's an inside out, and then there's the the right side to be out. Same thing with a model. Every 3D model has an inside out, which is this red, and it has a right side, which is this stone color here. Um, sometimes with some scanning softwares, for whatever reason, it might flip those surfaces. And then what you would do is you could tell the software and you could flip it um, and change the orientation of the model. Almost 100% of the time it brings it in right. So we are correct here. And I always like to just change it just for my OCD to be kind of this top down view like this and just hit next. That's just what I do. So now what it's going to do, it's analyzing the occlusion. And here, um, this is an old scan. I remember back in the day when the Emerald, this is from the original Emerald, had a lot of issues with over-articulation of the arches. They have, <laughs> they have spent a lot of time getting this fixed, and it is gorgeous right now in the software. But nevertheless, this is kind of how the models were articulated from the software, which does throw off a lot of the diagnostic ability of this case with the slight over articulation in the posterior segment here. Um, I'm going to hit, uh, so because we are doing um, probably a putty wash on this, I don't want to change this model too much. So I'm going to hit don't modify the scan data. Because what, what it would do if you hit modify scan data is it would literally just cut this tooth surface poking through, slice it. And the issue with that for this particular uh, case is we're going to make a putty that needs to fit in the patient's mouth of this diagnostic wax up. And if it, if it altered the original model, the putty won't fit. And then nothing will work. And so we're going to do an additive wax up here and transfer it to the patient's mouth. Okay, so let's go through now. It prompts you for Smile Creator. If you don't have this, that means you probably don't have that feature of the software and you should contact Plan Mecca. So start Smile Creator. Um, the first thing it does is it asks for a retracted image. Let's find that. It's under my downloads. If you downloaded the case, um, I think it's this one. Yep. So what don't I like about this photograph? You see how crooked it is? Number one. Now I have patient's head in a special jig, camera's on a tripod at a set focal distance. And more importantly, the, the orientation of the patient's head between the two photos, the retracted and the smile, shouldn't change. Um, in other words, like you don't want the patient just sitting in a chair and you snap a photograph of them and then you have the patient take out the retractors and do a smile and they tilt their head or the camera moves because for two-dimensional smile design to be successful you have to have the photograph almost at the exact coincident angle and that's where i think 3d smile design has an advantage when you do a 3d face scan um in my opinion everybody always asks why not just do 2d well because you know it's actually a little bit technique sensitive with 2d photos um, so learn from my mistakes. I now, um, there's a few ways that you can get the patient's head to stay in the same position. One is use a tripod. Um, 
and, and just have that set, have the patient in a chair. And what I like to do is um, have the patient hold an object against the wall with their head in such a way that they can't move. Um, some people have custom like jigs. Um, I use a box of gloves. And let's just for argument's sake say that this was a box of gloves. This is not, this is a beautiful Emerald S. But you'd have the patient hold the box of gloves like this and put pressure. And if they move, for whatever reason, if they if they change their head position, they really can't because the glove box is light enough to where it will just fall. And then you know they switch positions, you got to start over. That's like the poor man's way of doing um, photos properly. The other way is to actually create uh, a jig. You could also um, have special glasses and things like that. Um, Coice glasses help kind of orientate things. I don't know. Uh, just uh, really a lot of options that you have um, available. I personally um, like doing 3D small designs with 3D face scans, and we'll we'll, do, we'll cover that in a different um, lecture tutorial, quick guide. Okay, so anyway, so now we have to pin this three-dimensional object to this two-dimensional photograph. Rolly ball zooms in and out. Okay. Um, right click um, does nothing. Okay. Except if you if you click the actual photo. <clears throat> Right click out here rotates the model. Okay. Left click is what's going to put points on the teeth. And then to translate, this is the actually the most annoying part. You click both mouse buttons at the same exact time. So, like if I want to, and see, see what I did there? I didn't do it at the same exact time and it dropped a ball. And that, that kind of upsets me a little bit because, like, I'll be trying to like move something, I'll drop balls all over. Um, if you accidentally dropped a ball like I did, just click the ball and move it. Um, like I said, clicking both mouse buttons is supposed to translate the model, but then it tends to drop balls. So you have a blue ball and a green ball. What you want to do is separate those two balls on a coincident point on the 3D model and the 2D photograph. I usually use the cuspid cusp tips. Sometimes I might be so bold as to go to the first premolars. And so here I'm going to put one here. And it's important that blue and green line up. In other words, blue is on six, tooth number six, or one, three for everybody in the rest of the world. Um, you don't want to flip the blue and the green because it will flip the image um, in the after stage. Try to be as precise as possible. So like if you see some distinguishing feature of a tooth, like that little kind of wear facet there, go for it. Um, pick that distinguishing feature. Don't pick teeth that are right next to each other or too close together. The further apart the dots, the better. Cuspids typically work, premolar, but if you start to get the laterals and centrals, if they're too close together, you're going to have a lot of adjustments in the next stage. Okay, so this is the next stage. Now, there's one thing that I need you to understand. This is a three-dimensional model pinning to a two-dimensional photo. And what I really like about this software is it enables you to rotate the model without moving it. So if you feel confident that your balls are in the correct spot, notice how this model is not lining up at all. No problem. Right-click the model and rotate it and get it as close as possible. Okay. There we go. So something kind of kind of like this. And yeah, we start to get some slight distortion here in the posterior. Um, that can be a little bit of an issue for the precision of this. So I might just grab my ball and move it ever so slightly. Don't go crazy with your ball movement. Because you, you probably had it right to begin with. So the, the more adjustments that you make with the balls in this stage, be careful. Uh, minor, minor movements with the balls. Most of the adjust adjustments in this stage need to be uh, right-click rotation of this model. And this looks really pretty close. Um, I'm going to just split the difference here. I like, I think I like that. I think we're really, really close. So I'm going to hit next. And that's what we got. Okay. So the next step is we're going to load 
the and, and don't worry, the lowers never line up, obviously, because she's not in maximum intercuspation for this retracted photo. So load a smile image, and I think that's this one. Now, this is where we really screwed up um, photographing. And I dropped the ball. <laughs> um, if you look at these two images, they're not at the same angle. And that's going to cause some issues. They're not at the same focal length of the camera. Always use a fixed prime lens. Don't ever like zoom, get a zoom lens. That's just not, not really acceptable for dental photography. Um, you want a one-to-one -one and all that kind of stuff. We could do a whole photography class later. I've learned a lot since um, five, six years ago. Okay, so once again, now here's the issue. Her lip is covering the cuspids. It might be okay to go CEJ here to CEJ. I tend not to like to do that because gingival zenith um, is, is a less distinct mark than an incisal edge. But let's just see. Let's just see what we get here. I'm going to go to next. And that's the alignment where we got some issues. And a lot of it has to do with the photograph. Um, I'm going to ever so slightly tweak, tweak this. Try, I'm paying a, a lot of attention to, hmm. To the inside, so, so this incisal edge is covered up, but eight and nine are an issue. Eight and nine are a little bit of an issue, and we start to get some issues with the posterior segment. See, um, if I get this posterior segment lined up, my anterior, and this is because the patient's head between the two photos went like this. The yaw of the head changed, and the angle of the camera changed. Unacceptable for diagnostic small design. So um, the reason why we're using this case is for the purposes of teaching you this. So a lot of you are going to do this when you first start and you're going to be frustrated as I was when I first started 2D smile design. And a lot of the reasons why I switched to 3D. Um, but let's, and, and like I said, the photos are the single most important thing. And if, if you're not spot on with your photos, the whole thing becomes an issue. Um, in that case, I would use just one photograph um, for this individual. In other words, I wouldn't have loaded a retracted. I would just load a smile because she does display gingiva. Um, so let me back up here. Let me show you how to do that. Load smile, load retracted. I would come here and delete that. Okay. And I would just go to load smile. And when you have one photo, we got lucky here because the patient has a gummy smile. And we have everything that we would need. <laughs> um, it's much more accurate when you have one photo to worry about. If you've screwed up your photography, like in this case. So now we could come in here and get these as close as possible. Creepers, spend some time here. Um, once again, guys, this is a lesson. This is a hard learned lesson that I hope that you're you're getting from me right now. So we've got these lined up perfectly, and we're gonna hit next. Okay. So since we only loaded the one smile shot and we deleted the other one, um, so that's also teaching you how to delete and edit images if you accidentally load the wrong ones and whatnot. Now it's asking us to draw the lip line. So you basically just circle the lip, being super careful here. Now, you could add points by double clicking, and you could click any ball and move it. So take your time. Sometimes, um, like over here, you have to add some more balls so that you could follow asymmetries in the curvature of the lip. And once again, if you want to go, if you want my personal philosophy on what I'm looking at with this case as I go through it, look at the first video. It's more instructive. Okay. So now it's asking us to pick the interpupillary line. So right in the center of the pupil, and that's going to parallel the 
the inner pupillary line of the horizon, upright the image, and it's also going to drop a midline. Now, this patient's facial midline is not coincident with her nose. Um, the facial midline right here is also going to be probably not easily achievable. So, so this is your, your proportion ratio ladder that you can move any which way. Um, basically, what you want, this is when you want to fudge on the midline. So I know on this, I could go up to three millimeters deviation from the midline if I'm parallel um, to the facial midline. As long as I'm not canted. So I don't want to be like this in over here. That's the biggest mistake that you can make. But if I'm parallel to the midline, I could, I could fudge a lot in either direction. And for this patient, I'm going to slightly fudge about a millimeter, okay, from facial midline. Nobody will notice. These proportion ratios are expandable and contractible. I don't like this uh, for her. I don't like this ratio, this golden ratio. I'm going to actually go to a 165.50. So you have all these options. 165.50, and I like that ratio better for her. Okay. Might just pump this over just a smidge. Yeah, I'm liking that. So now what do we do? We take this blue line and we get it coincident with the lip line, the arc of the lower lip. Okay. Super cool. All our ratios are good. Facial midline and your pupillary line. Um, Let's keep going next. By the way, you could add lines and curves. Um, you could drop extra smile lines. You could drop extra facial lines. You could do facial thirds. Um, all those kinds of things are possible with the software. Let me back up a step. Ugh. So I accidentally had this up here when it should have been down here. Not a big deal. We could just move it um, in the next stage here. So this is when you want to pick your library. Um, move this kind of out of the way. So you have all these different libraries that you could choose from, depending on you know what you've purchased. And there's a lot of third parties that you could pur purchase ExoCAD libraries for. I have a couple hundred. Uh, different libraries, but the ones that you, the ones that you have, um, are probably the generic um, HD ExoCAD, PlanCAD Premium library. So let's go to HD. Okay. Um, so, what do we do? Well, let's talk about how to manipulate the three D and two D in this view. So the first thing that you need to understand is that how to move teeth. And it gives you these three views of facial, an incisal, and a profile. Profile is super important. And actually kind of the first thing that you want to adjust. These are proclined ridiculously um, to the facial. I mean, you see, they look good on like the midline and length. But we need to translate them palatally. So we're going to click click this just a little bit. OK? And then move the whole thing kind of so that it's at the lip line here. See that? Don't click the box. This is not like Photoshop, where you click that, that yellow line. It's better if you click in the middle of the box, okay? To make sense. So you don't want to necessarily. So also the way that you select teeth is twofold. You could come in here and draw a square on the 2D and it selects the teeth, or you come in here in the 3D and draw a square. If you just want to select one tooth, just draw 
square around one tooth. If you want two teeth, draw a square around two teeth, so on and so forth. And then those are movable. And you have several different options when you want to move teeth. Um, so I could just click one tooth, <clears throat> and then I could click mirror movements here. And I could literally, now it is kind of like Photoshop, like where you're resizing an image um, in like a PowerPoint or something. You could click the square and resize it uniformly. You could quick click, um, click on the edge and resize it longitudinally. You could rotate. Um, by clicking the little rotate arrow um, and then to resize without losing the anatomy to make it smaller or bigger, you could drag a corner. Maybe you want to incorporate a diastema, maybe you don't. Um, it's really powerful, the, the tools that you have and the ability to do quick changes here in both two dimensions and three dimensions. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't love the position of these laterals, so I'm going to go ahead and change them a little bit. They're like super wicked long. Oh, by the way, if you want to know like how long the teeth are, go to the measurement and you click a tooth and it tells you. So right now we're at 10 and a half long and 8.8 .8 wide. I kind of like that for the central for her. Um, and this would be the amount of gingivectomy, potential osectomy that we'd have to do. The laterals are still, in my opinion, a little bit much for her. Um, and we want to follow this blue line here. Okay, so we're just manipulating them. Oh, I accidentally clicked two teeth there. Now, if you want to move them individually without mirror movements, just click the mirror movements off. And you could be moving them individually. Changing the cuspid size a little bit. So I toggle between mirror on and mirror off as we deal with the asymmetries of the arch. Looking at the 2D view and the 3D view. Um, not really taking much into consideration here as it relates to the perfect contours. Yeah, I don't like making major changes in this version of the software. The main thing I want to get here is incisal edge length following the contour of the teeth, proclination, and midline. And then from here, what I'm going to do now is I actually like to get out of this smile design module because I actually like to make most of my changes in the normal, the normal software, if you will. Let me just increase the size of that. And I'll show you why. It's just, it's much faster and easier. But we still need a few things to do in this small design module. We need to pick the color of her teeth. Um, there's a few ways to do that. You could click any one of these colors, and then you could also drag the mouse to go in between various different colors. Okay. She's obviously going to want a brighter smile, probably. So I'd probably go with an A1. I don't like how weird yellowy it looks, though, to be honest. So I'm going to actually um, custom color selection here and show you that. And then some, so basically, with custom color selection, it asks you to find the highlight and the low light. The base color, click the dropper. Um, you want that to be something kind of dark. The highlight, you want it to be something kind of bright. Let's see. And then you could change the chroma intensity. You could alter, um, this is the amount of yellow, the, the amount of chroma. You could change the value, um, the relative brightness is down here. Chroma is up here. And this, this is your base color. I don't really mess with that uh, too much. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep her somewhere like that. I'm going to hit next. And now this is where I like to make all my move movements. So let me just um, turn off my antagonist by hitting A. <clears throat> so why do I like moving things here? Well, because, you know, be honest with you, I really like chain mode. Chain mode is 
it's just how I like to wax. Um, so, and you're going to lose a lot of what you did in the smile design, but that's okay because it actually keeps those photos and all those measurements that you can go back to. So chain mode is like amazing. So what am I going to do in chain mode? Chain mode right here. The first thing I'm going to do is select this disc uh, on one side. And I'm going to go right to the distal proximal contact. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that disc in. I'm going to get the CEJs kind of lined up. And this is just a start. And I'm going to lock that disc in by hitting that, that ball, turning the green ball red. Then I'm going to rotate to the other side. And I'm going to take that disc. I'm looking at marginal ridge height, proximal contacts, CEJ. I'm going to lock that disc in. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my cuspid. Okay. Just focusing on my cuspid, ignoring everything else. Just my cuspid. Lock my cuspid in. Lock my cuspid in. Now I'm going to go to 8 and 9. Okay. Just focusing on 8 and 9. I'm going to lock those in. Now I'm going to move my laterals last because the laterals are the most variable uh, teeth in the anterior and I like to just keep them last because I know I have a lot of wiggle room with them. And this is just a start for me. Okay. That's good. So we, so we kind of really quickly just morph this smile and then you go to simple mode. Simple mode lets you move teeth individually and, and really lets you fine tune things. Um, so let me, let me show you why I like simple mode. First, let me turn off this true smile. I don't like it right now. I want to see the teeth. I turn that off right here. Simple mode lets you quickly alter an individual tooth. Okay. So what you're going to do is you can just click a tooth and move it. Control rotates the tooth. Shift will expand and contract the tooth if you hold that down. And then control shift will just grow it in one direction. So maybe, maybe I want it more prominent on the buckle there. Okay. Control rotates. Okay. I'm just going to rotate these just a little bit palatal and stick them out just a little bit. This is like set in a denture. Chain mode gets you 99% there. Uh, and then uh, single tooth lets you add asymmetries and lets you correct for tooth size, arch size discrepancies when the patient's mouth is not symmetrical. Um, there's a lot that it does that I really like. Now you're, you're saying, well, Doc, what about all that smile design work that we did? Where did it go? And, and how do we get it back to be able to, to see where we are? Good question. So what you want to do to get that back, go ahead and hit this small design view down here. Then go to your 2D and turn on your photo. Okay. And here you can see we got a world of issues. <laughs> this poor, poor, poor thing has a lot, probably an ortho case. Um, a lot of asymmetry, asymmetries gingively, lip line, lip length, um, lots going on here. Um, and we could also turn on our smile creator, um, all our values here to see exactly what's going on. So we have a lot of issues here and some concerns. Um, do we want to lengthen some of these teeth gingerly um, or do we want to orthodontically intrude them? Is there a, a facial discrepancy, short lower lip, short upper lip, uh, vertical maxillary access? I mean, this. The main issue with this patient is an ultra short, ultra short upper lip, um, and that that's that's one of the the lip should drape, you know, right around here on most normal uh, lips, and you can see how small her upper lip is. And if you want to know the details of the smile analysis of this patient, watch the other video. But if I was going to do this case aesthetically and I wasn't going to do it orthodontically. Um, 
I would definitely number one Botox the upper lip so that it doesn't move um, during the smile, which would allow it to drape a little bit. But also, I would try to correct for some maxillary um, asymmetries here with some prosthodontics. So the way that I would do that is I'm going to actually go to expert mode. Um, and I'm going to click on the model. And I'm going to go to freeform scan data. And I'm going to keep this smile design view. And I'm going to edit the model um, from this smile design view and not rotate it at all. This is the small design view here. And I'm gonna actually hold uh, add remove and hold shift. And it goes from green to red. And I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen the centrals right about to the upper lip here. So we're probably talking about two millimeters tops uh, of gingivectomy here with maybe a little bit of uh, osseous removal. Don't rotate the model. Okay, get this to be exactly where you want it. And in a later tutorial, we could teach you how to make a surgical cutting guide uh, from this. But from now, let's just do this. Now, the laterals, um, gingival architecture wise, it's okay for the laterals to be shorter gingivally than the centrals um, by about one or two millimeters, depending on the study that you read, or even on the same height. I'm going to lengthen just a smidge, um, just a little tiny bit on tooth number 10, but on tooth number seven, I'm going to have to do quite a bit here to make up for her asymmetries of her maxilla. Okay. And we will have to shorten that tooth incisively in a later step. Same thing here with the cuspid, a little bit lengthening on this cuspid here to bring it. Um, by the way, if you do too much, just go to add and just put it back. So I might do a little bit on this cuspid, just a half a millimeter. So now we're starting to get a little bit better of a gingival architecture here. Still probably considered a gummy smile if there's three millimeters here above the lateral and the cuspids, but uh, there's always a compromise between biology um, and, and aesthetics and, and things like that. Um, so once again, Sculpting this tissue back a little bit here. Probably would do tooth number five here, a little bit of uh, gingivectomy there, so you don't have such a step down. Um, like you go with the second premolar goes way down out of sight, but that's okay. Um, we can do that at a later date. Okay, so now we've done the gingivectomy, um, and I'm looking at the full face here. You can turn on your true smile later and look. So now I need to move some, some teeth uh, and size edges. You want the gingival zeniths to be distal to the slightly distal to the midline, um, not mesial here. So you have to be careful uh, where you're removing. In other words, you don't want to just remove without thinking about where you want that final gingival architecture to be, because this will be used actually for the cutting guide uh, eventually. Okay, so we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna go back to our wizard and we're gonna move some teeth. And you might say, well, what if we wanted to reduce her natural tooth? How do we do that? Well, same exact thing. So like, um, we'll do that at a later stage here. Let me just get this smile. I like that, like mega, mega bunch. Um, that's looking awesome. Let me get rid of all these photos, 2D and smile creator. Um, let me just go now and deal with spacing issues. So I'm gonna shift click that cuspid a little bit bigger. Same thing here, shift holding shift. We have some lateral uh, incisor discrepancies here. I'm gonna just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So now how do we get rid of the teeth poking through? Well, there, you might not want to do that because then it doesn't, then it's no longer an additive wax up. 
And if it's no longer an additive wax, if you can't transfer it to the patient's mouth. Um, I think we have what we need to hit next. And now we have the ability to fine tune the teeth. They're like, you know, you could basically drag some of the tooth and move it in, move it out. You could go to free form, smooth flatten, and hold shift and flatten some of the some of the stuff away. Um, now's the time to look at your gingivectomy. Um, you can see we were asymmetrical here because we were looking at from the facial view, the smile design view. So always know that you can go back to your expert mode, click the model, and go to freeform scan data and go right back to sculpting if you want. And so I don't love the angle of this. Uh, we're going to have to remove a bunch on that distal. Probably add some to the museal. And you want to be realistic. Um, I always take an ultra low dose CBCT of the patient to determine where the bone is. And um, at a later date, I could teach you how to um, bring that in as well. So you have the soft tissue and the hard tissue when you're doing this. Not rocket science, just go to tools, add mesh, and add STL of the, of the hard tissue. Um, everything's easy to do um, in the software. Okay, so um, you might actually want to compromise and say, okay, she has some tooth poking through here. I'm going to actually just go to my anatomy here. My, f Oh, sorry, guys. Let me get out of this and go back to the wizard. So you got two options at this point. You could come in here and just like we did the tissue, you could melt back the stone model. Um, I avoid that at all cost on the teeth because you will then no longer be able to transfer this to the patient's mouth for an emotional mock-up. In other words, I would stop kind of here. I would work out the occlusion, which we'll cover in a different tutorial, 3D print this model, and make a putty of it, wash the putty with a light body polyvinyl siloxane, squirt bisacryl in there, transfer to the patient's mouth and have them smile. And you won't even really see if you get the bisacryl color the same, this little perforation here. Um, alternatively, if you were worried about it, you could come in here and just morph ever so slightly um, these little areas to make them minimal without really compromising the aesthetics. Um, and if you were making occlusal adjustments, which you should be in this case, um, you could come in here and also go to your tools, like your freeform tools, smooth flatten, and melt back the linguals, et cetera, et cetera, so that it's a smooth transition back here. Go right to your CEJs. It is not the intention of this quick guide to show you dynamic articulation and, and how to do this appropriately with um, the software. It's more of a smile design tutorial, but you could have it be a smooth transition back here. So now, and maybe I would even get rid of that. So now this is what we're looking at. Um, we could go to our true smile view. We could go back to our 2D view, go back to your smile design view and see how we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we still have a, a kind of a gummy display. Cuspids look a little long cervically, um, which we could add some tissue back. Um, no problems. We're a hundred percent improvement on this young lady with just some minimum prep, no prep veneers and some moderate aesthetic crown lengthening. Yes. We also do orthodontic intrusion. Um, Botox on the upper lip will help. You could do lip extensions, all sorts of things surgically for her, um, which most people will not go through. Okay, so how do we get this printable? You're gonna hit next. Um, it says I have not adapted, not adapted, not adapted. That is fine. I, I understand that. I am not gonna design the gingiva. So now how do we get this printed? I'm going to go ahead and go to um, design model. <clears throat> and it's gonna walk me through the model design. Um, model type, it, it 
doesn't really matter. matter. Um, I've used um, this rapid shape in the past and you literally, what you could do is if you want to cut that palette away, is change the model height and move the model. Okay, so you come in here, cut it like this. Okay. No dies. Let it run again. Um, it. I find that it really doesn't matter. Like if you pick Sprint Ray or Nexten or whatever is preloaded in there, it doesn't really. I don't really understand what they've done to maximize the success on those specific printers because it doesn't really seem to matter to me um, at all. All right. Like I said, graphics card intensive here. Um, it takes time and I'm running a, I think I'm running a GTX 3070 on this machine here with, it's a insanely fast machine. Okay, you can see where we cut that. Now we're gonna do the lower. Um, we, I probably would not print the lower in this particular circumstance. I'd probably just print the upper. And I'll show you two ways to which you could print the upper with the wax up. You can print both, like kind of like a, this is where you are and this is where you're going um, kind of thing. But know that you edited the gingiva and that's going to transfer over to the before. And so you, what you'd want to do is load um, a generic visualization mesh and print that. Because this this model here has the gingivectomy. See the, see the work that we did? Um, okay. So now we have our models ready for 3D printing. We have our original models here that I'm going to get rid of by hitting S and A. Okay. So now how do we get the teeth to be watertight to the model? And this is, of course, um, a really cool feature in Galway, which uh, I think Climac is updating to any day now, hopefully, um, because it kind of takes care of this workflow a little bit easier where you could do these uh, mock-ups super fast. But basically all you do is um, go to expert mode save your uh, case and go to create digital wax up model. And there it is. It's a watertight one piece model that you can now save to anywhere on your desktop or, you know, I would just call it, you know, print print. Okay. So there you go. And what's weird in this version of the software, it doesn't save it into your catalog. When you hit OK, it saves it to that. But then it's not like visible in any of your your models. It like it doesn't keep it for you to look at. But just know that it's been saved uh, for you to 3D print. Um, yeah, so that's um, this is added a wax up that we would transfer to the patient's mouth and then make adjustments to in the chair on the bisacryl. So let's say the cusp is long, need workout guidance, you adjust the occlusion, make some tweaks, then take your scanner, whatever scanner you have, um, hopefully an Emerald S, and then scan that in. And that is your final, final wax up that you've adjusted in the mouth, you've verified phonetics, you've verified midline, um, you've gotten the occlusion perfect through the patient's own mouth, um, scan that in, that is now your record. Of, and you could do this all in one appointment. You, If you get good, and I hope that you come to one of my classes where you could learn how to do this fast, you would get the patient in for a new consultation, scan them, take the photos, put them in the smile design, 3D print the model, make the putty, and transfer it to the patient's mouth. Work it all out, rescan it, and watch as they are bamboozled by you. And I guarantee you they will go forward with the case with you over any other dentist anywhere. Uh, because they see that you took the time to care and that you are amazing with uh, technology and all that kind of stuff. So.
thank you for tagging along for this smile design quick guide and many more to come.